everyone. My name is Antoine Aman. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Echobox. We are building what we call the world's first AI that understands the meaning of content like a human. I will tell you a bit about the company, what we do, and how we've actually built our technology. Um, and afterwards, I'll answer any questions you might have. Great. So, often AI is, um, uh, is an important topic when talking about when will an AI uh, replace humans to drive a car, or when will an AI replace humans for certain medical procedures or other examples. But very few people actually talk about AI as um, when will it actually automate uh, the task of humans when it comes to writing content or even distributing content on social media. And that's something that we have basically tackled. So we've built an AI that can automate the presence of social media of big publishers. And um, I think one really good example is this one. So um, the New Scientist, they wrote uh, a piece about uh, when AI will replace humans, or when will AI beat humans, um, and they claim it's by 2016. Um, and interestingly, so Elon Musk, he uh, replied to this tweet, and um, he disagreed and said, you know what, it's going to happen sooner. Now, what Elon Musk didn't know is that this tweet was actually generated by an AI. It was generated by our AI. Our AI. So, it's a new scientist, one of our clients, uh, and we basically analyzed all their content um, and picked the best article to post on Twitter at a specific time in order for it to maximize reach. And um, the good thing is it actually was posted at the best time Elon Musk they picked it up. What we then did is we actually, as a company, the whole company, we uh, um, composed a reply for Twitter for Elon Musk and uh, we basically wrote, he got to Elon, uh, we replied back to him. He didn't reply back to us, so. so. <laughs> So I think, um, just to kind of go through this, so what we basically did, as I said, is we picked the best content and also we picked the best image as well. So um, out of all images that are available, you can A-B test different images and we basically picked the image with the highest virality. Also, we picked the best message. So what you can also do with Echobox is uh, we read through all sentences in an article and we can uh, measure the virality of every single sentence in an article. And, and, and of every single word as well, and then we pick the best sentence to be used as a share message. Um, and then also, and we obviously pick the best time and we can reshare content as well, optimally too. And this is all to basically save our publishers a lot of time and efforts before they had to do all of this manually. Now they can just let Echobox do all the work for them. So this is a bit tongue in cheek, this question. Obviously, I, I don't think that our AI passes um, the Turing test. Um, but I would like to play a little game with you. Um, and I would like you to guess whether you think a Facebook message of The Guardian, which is another client of ours, um, is AI generated or whether it was written by a human. So please have a quick look through this Facebook message. Um, and yeah, just I'll give you 15 seconds. <laughs> Great. So those of you that think that this was written by a human, please raise your hands. Okay, just a few of you. And I assume all, all the others assume it was, it was done by an AI. Is that true? Can you raise your hands, please? Yeah, great. Okay. This was indeed um, done by an AI. Um, now, this one is a bit different. So as you can see, it's a quote. Um, and um, what do you think? Is this human or AI? Just, um, I'll give you 10 seconds to go through this. <clears throat> okay, uh, please raise your hands if you think it was written by a human. Okay, please raise your hands if you think it was written by an AI. Okay, it's about half-half, interesting. So the right answer is human. <laughs> Great, so this is the last one. What about this one here? Okay, who thinks it was written by a human? Nobody. Oh, one person, two people. Okay. Three, uh, four. Okay, and AI? Everyone else? Good. AI, good. <laughs> Wonderful. So, just to kind of, I don't want to get too much into what clients you know, use it, but um, it is being used by some of the world's biggest publishers worldwide, so many of which you will have heard of. And what is, what is beautiful about this is that as a reader, when you go on, 
on Facebook or on Twitter of these published accounts, you wouldn't notice that it's all done by an AI because it's that good. And that's the whole point. Um, and it's, um, it's really cool. So we're quite proud of what we've built. Yeah. So I can, I'll tell you a bit more about how we've actually built this and a, and a bit about the tech behind it. Um, I won't go into too much detail because it is obviously proprietary. But um, I think one, one really important point here is um, you know, any algorithms you build, any machine learning methods you use are only as good as, as the data you actually have. Um, and we recognize this quite early on. And whenever we sign up a new client, we basically ask them to give us access to all their data. So they give us access to the entire analytics um, um, uh, software. Um, and we basically scrape a lot of historical data. And this is extremely granular real-time data. Um, and if you know, other companies that try and optimize for social media presence, often they will look at uh, purely public data. So they will look at you know, how many likes and reshares and so forth um, there is. But that data is not granular enough to actually build a really good model like, like we have and to actually achieve what we have achieved. So this is, I think, one, one little secret. Um, you know, get as much data as you can. The, um, the next one is, so, so one thing we do, as I said before, is we pick the right articles, right? So a big publisher will publish up to 1,000 articles each day, uh, but you get, only get to share maybe 30 or 40 on Facebook. Um, so the question is, out of those 1,000, what are the best 30 or 40? Previously, prior to Echobox, publishers would have teams of editors going through all that content manually uh, and looking at, at analytics uh, screens as well and looking at uh, feeds of their competitors on Facebook, on Twitter, looking at what's trending, doing all this manual analytics work to decide what to actually share. And uh, what, the way we solve this is we predict uh, the virality of content in, in order for the human not to have to do it anymore. And uh, what we use for that is a deep learning, a deep neural net, essentially, or where, where off, whereby we train uh, we train the model of historical data so we know how well certain articles worked in, in, in the past and then we predict future articles using, using those models. Um, I think what's quite interesting here as well is that we found quite early on that for this to really work really well, um, we have to build a model for every single client separately. So each client has their own model um, and it's calibrated according to the audience that actually reads that content. So the audience of, let's say, The Guardian has different preferences than an audience of in the Sun or Deadline Hollywood, for instance, which is also a client of ours too. Yeah. Um, next one is timing. So timing is actually really tricky, and that's something we've uh, we spend a lot of time on. Um, and you know what what we use for timing. So when I say timing, just to define, so timing is when should an article go out. Um, now, different types of content works well across different times of day. So even the same publisher will write, like even the Guardian, for instance, they will write technology pieces, culture pieces, political pieces, and so forth. And um, for instance, some politics pieces might work well in the mornings, whereas other types of pieces might work well in the afternoons. Um, and we can calculate this by the minutes of the day. So that's the granularity at which we can define what, what the be best time is. And, and in all, order to do this, we use a genetic algorithm. So basically what we do is we analyze all the contents that we, have, that we chose to, to share. Um, and then we basically test it out across many different times of day um, with a genetic algorithm. And the, the optimal output is essentially what, what combination of all these articles and times would generate the most traffic for, for our clients. Yeah, and the, the last thing is, so when, when we say we're building an AI that understands content like a human, you know, we humans, when we read through an article, we um, notice that certain things that are very hard for a machine to notice. So for instance, you know, we would know whether an article is breaking news, whether it's something like a terrorist attack or something like really that has to go out quickly and has to be read you know, very quickly. Uh, we also will know intuitively whether an article is evergreen contents, whether it's something that can go out at any time. Um, and especially editors obviously know that very well when, when they read their own content. So we, in order to automate that presence, we don't want to share uh, breaking news content late, so evergreen contents too soon. Um, and we want to optimize you know, uh, all content. So what we do is we predict whether something is, is breaking news or whether something is evergreen content or whether something is like today-ish content that is between the two. Um, and you know, for this, we use different methods. Or, you know, one of them is obviously we use lots of, lots of natural language processing as well. So we analyze the article, we analyze the keywords, um, we compare those with labels data that we have collected from our clients um, of historical breaking news and historical evergreen content. Uh, and this, this gives us a good, um, like, prediction of what type of content something is within just a few seconds. So we have the ability to um, classify content a lot faster than a human ever could because you know, it's a lot, it's, it just takes a few seconds for us to know whether this is a certain type of article. Yeah. 
Um, great, so this is something I just, just explained. Um, great, so yeah, I think just to recap, you know, we basically automate the, um, the part of analytics, um, as I said before, editors and, and um, you know, social media editors um, and also journalists who are also in charge of, of helping out with social media will just spend hours and hours every day looking at, looking at analytics and we basically remove that need to, to do that. Right, so this is uh, how many impressions we generate um, each month, which is, which is quite, quite a big number for a company of our size. Um, and um, yeah, so we have clients all around the world um, and um, our technology works in, in 20 languages, which is quite cool. Um, I think from the beginning we made, uh, put a big focus on having a technology that works not just in English, but in any language. So we even have languages like Hebrew um, that, that use Echobox or even uh, Persian as well. Um, and um, yeah, and something like a little side project we did um, uh, earlier this year is we basically used the data we're collecting um, to predict uh, elections. So we did this to predict the French election. Um, and um, you know, there were many um, uh, traditional polling agencies trying to predict both rounds of the French election. Um, and you know, typically, a, a polling agency will do a survey uh, by asking maybe a thousand people um, and understanding their voter preferences. Uh, and doing these kind of surveys once a month or once every few weeks. Now, what we did is we built a system um, that could predict the election every minute of the day. So we analyzed interests of readers in France um, every minute of the day. And, um, and we got a really granular um, insight into, what, into how um, well certain parties and certain candidates were being received within the French population. And um, uh, most other kind of big data um, prediction um, things that existed out there didn't predict correctly. So they predicted, for instance, that Le Pen would win and so forth. And uh, we predicted correctly the ranking of different of all the candidates in the first round. And we also predicted correctly the percentages of, um, of how many votes um, Macron and Le Pen would get in the second round as well. And now we, because it was such a great success, um, we've now done the same thing for the German election as well. So if you're interested, um, you can go on our websites uh, and you can have a look at what's what we predict for, for Germany, all I can say is that the um, AFD, the right wing party, I, we think is going to gain a lot more traction than, than what the media um, currently suggests. Great, and the beauty is because a machine is a lot more effective than a human at analyzing content, um, we also increase traffic for our clients. So not only do they save a lot of time, but they also see a nicer output in, in traffic and revenues. Great, so this is the numerical amount of how much money or how much revenue we generated for our clients last year. And, um, and this was the presentation, so thank you very much.